I call this meeting to order and regular meeting for August the 1st, 2023. Welcome everybody, nice warm day and everybody's rodeoed out and ready to get right back to, to action again. Um, so I will go on with the meeting. Uh, Result of the agenda for the August 1st, 2023 regular council meeting be adopted. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. So Councillor Powell, I know that there's a little bit of a, a delay, so I, I will purposely just kind of watch for you just in case uh, voting or, or questions. Hey, perfect. Okay. Result of the minutes of the July 4th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bovic, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, before we get on to receptions and delegations, um, we have with us tonight the president from the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce, who is here to receive their annual grant, grant from the town of Swan River for $10,000. So I do a presentation here we can. Thank you. And you're more than uh, welcome to stay and, and watch uh, our our meeting. I was really done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to 4.1. CFO Ganita and Pasico Hardy and Company uh, are here to uh, give us the 2022 draft audited consolidated financial statement. Uh, I'm assuming right, that you're able to share my screen, please. Yeah. Mr. Hardy, is there any reason if you need to see the screen at all? Okay. Nope. He's got all this in there. No, I assume so, but I just... Good old paper. Okay, Terry, you yeah. should be good. CFO Ganita. So uh, we're looking at the 2022 year-end draft consolidated financial statements. And consolidated means that every amount reported is a consolidation of all the town's funds, general operating utility, operating capital fund, reserve funds, as well as all controlled entities and proportionate shares of government partnerships and interfund and intercompany balances and transactions have been eliminated. So the controlled entities are the Handy Transit Van and Swan River Municipal Developers, and the government partnerships are the medical recruitment fund, the library uh, district recreation commission, which has been disbanded, but there's still some comparative figures in the comparative year, uh, airport commission, planning district and rise. And so the statement of responsibility, the second page just states that the financial statements are the responsibility of management. And so they were prepared by me in accordance with uh, Canadian Chartered Professional Accountants, Public Sector Accounting Board standards. And uh, PKHC Chartered Professional Accounts have given their opinion in the independent auditor's report. Which, uh, Mr. Hardy will give you know, later. So skipping past the index to uh, page six, consolidated statement of financial position, and it shows the financial assets, financial assets are cash or, or amounts that, that will be converted to cash, become amounts receivable, will become cash when we collect the monies from the people that owe us the money. Real estate properties held for sale will become cash when we sell the properties other inventories for sale, likewise, when they get sold. And then liabilities, 
And so the difference between financial assets and liabilities is the net debt. And then the non-financial assets are the ones that will not be realized as cash at any time they'll be used. So if tangible capital assets are used by the town, they will not be normally sold at the end of life they will be. But, um, and then the inventories for use as well, like fuel and chemicals and so forth, will not be sold, they'll, they'll be used, and then prepaid expenses. And then the bottom is the accumulated surplus. Once you take the net debt and the total of net debt and non-financial assets is the accumulated surplus. So just to highlight some of the bigger changes, the uh, cash went up from 5.7 million to 6.4 because of a sizable surplus in 2022. Amounts receivable and up from 1.2 million to 1.6 due to outstanding uh, landfill invoices for contaminated soil. Didn't get paid by year end, but uh, in, the, in 20, will be paid in 2023. Uh, accounts payable went up from 1.2 million to 1.4, mostly because of amounts owing to. Manitoba Water Services Board for Utility Capital Projects. They, they sent the invoice right at the end of the year. So. Pre-retirement bonus entitlement is the estimated net present value of future payouts to employees of the pre-retirement bonus when they retire. Unearned revenue consists of prepaid property taxes and utility water meter deposits, rental prepayments and deposits, and grants to be used in future years. So that balance went up from 214000 to 557000 again, due to those provincial grants for arena, the utility capital projects as well as the arena retrofit. So until the projects are done, it stays as unearned revenue, the product to revenue when the projects are done. Uh, Long-term debt consists of uh, debentures for the municipal office, while the center construction, firefighter equipment, 12th and 3rd paving, Rossland Pays lift stations, arena ice floor, incident command vehicle, water backhoe, 6th Avenue lift station, and well, control building, wellness center repairs, and Main Street water and sewer renewal. And that went down from 8.3 million to 7.7 because the town paid off the payments that are due every year until the end of the term. Uh, pre, this prepaid local improvement district levy, so back when the wellness center was built, was, uh, a portion of the borrowing uh, property owners could prepay $827 or else paid on that little bit on their taxes every year for 20 years. So the ones that prepaid is being amortized over the life of the borrowing. And deferred government transfers or the federal and provincial grants repayable if the wellness center is closed before December 31, 2025. Once once we pass, the town passes the 2025, then that figure will disappear because no, no, nothing will be repayable back to the province once the facility has been operated till 2025. And tangible capital assets is the net book value of all the town's tangible capital assets as well as those of controlled entities and share of government partnerships. Are there any questions on that page before we move on? Council, any question? It doesn't seem to be. So the next page is the consolidated statement of operations, and you'll see that the property taxes uh, went up by 187,000 from the previous year. Property taxes and grants in lieu of taxes. Uh, user fees. 
increased from 1.4 million in 2021 to 2.2 million in 2022 due to increased recreation facility usage post COVID and large quantities of contaminated soil taken to the landfill. Uh, this line called other revenue includes gains on sale of capital assets and real estate, uh, contributions of capital assets, cash donations, penalties and interest, amortization of prepaid local improvement levies and supplier rebates. Grants from the province of Manitoba in 2022, that 905,000 includes 325,000 municipal operated grant, 451,000 urban policing, uh, 19,000 handy van, 44,000 library and various other grants. And the previous year included uh, 810,000 urban wellness center construction grants brought into revenue after passing a milestone. Like the wellness center had to operate for a certain number of years or 90% of the grants were repayable. And then, then there was another period of years where a lesser amount was repayable. And now, if the facility is closed before the end of 2025, then only 580,000 has to be paid back to the province, and that's 10% of the total grants that were received. Other grants includes the federal gas tax. In uh, 2021, there was a one-time doubling and 102,000 funding from other municipalities towards partnerships. And again, the previous year was higher by one point because it included 1.8 million federal government funding towards the wellness center construction that got brought into revenue from passing another milestone. Under expenses, the general government services is up 69,000 due to hiring an assistant to the CAO as well as HVAC repairs, new computers, and Office 365 migration. Transportation services up 333,000 due to increased road repairs, cleaning up ditches, and much snow. Environmental health services increased 185,000 due to costs to handle that contaminated soil, as well as uh, recycling cost increase. Public health and welfare up by 30,000 due to more burials. Uh, resource conservation and industrial development is down 69,000 from the previous year due to rise in activity and, and fewer incentive program payouts. Recreation and cultural services increased 398,000 due to facilities reopening after COVID-19 pandemic restrictions lifted. And then water and sewer services uh, increased 148,000 mostly due to more connections from new construction. Any questions on that page? Anybody have any questions? So nope. the annual uh, surplus uh, 413,000 added to the opening surplus of 32 million gives the annual surplus 32.4 million. Uh, the next page uh, shows the statement of change in net financial assets and so you did take the surplus and add or subtract various other non-financial changes and balances and so the net financial assets increased by 1.1 million which added to the beginning net debt of 3.5 million gets the ending balance of 2.4 million and what net debt means is that revenues will need to be raised in future years to cover present liabilities and it went down from 3.5 million to 2.4 million because of the surplus and paying down long-term debt consolidated statement of cash flows shows the ins and outs of cash. So it takes the annual surplus and adjusts all the changes in non-cash items. 
So cash uh, provided by operating transactions, 2.2 million, and it was 5.1 million the previous year because of the wellness center construction funding brought into revenue. Cap under capital transactions, uh, 150,000 from selling off their trading in equipment, and 1.1 million was spent to purchase tangible capital assets. Under financing, uh, there was no borrowing, but the, the town paid off 632,000 of debt. So cash went up by 605,000, added to the opening balance of 5.7 million, gives the ending balance of just under 6.4 million. And then we get to the notes to financial statements that they talk about our accounting policies and give further breakdowns and detail to the other the main uh, financial statements. And so you know, two significant accounting policies that uh, they're prepared on an accrual basis, not cash. Accrual means revenues are recorded when earned and expenses when incurred not when we get the money or pay out the money. Councilor Medwood. Just a question at the bottom there under the partnerships where it lists the ones. There's Swan Valley District Recreation Commission. Is that still active? Are we contributing to that? Because I don't remember that being on our budget. No, no, it was, it was disbanded, but there's still some numbers left in the comparative year, so that will disappear completely next year. But since there are still some comparative numbers, then it's still listed. Okay, thank you. Carry on. Um, so uh, the rest of these just explain the accounting concepts. Stick down to Paragraph H, tangible capital assets, you can see that they're estimated, uh, amortized to expense over estimated useful lives, and the useful lives are listed there. So land improvements are anywhere from 10 to 30 years, buildings 25 to 40 years. The 25 years would be the wood frame buildings, and the 40 years would be the steel or the concrete structures. Uh, vehicles are five years, machinery, equipment, furniture, 10 years, road equipment, 15 years, com computer, hardware and software, four years. And these are, uh, these lifespans that were provided by the province. And, and so they want all municipalities to use those lifespans. That's what the province uses for their assets and they wanted the uh, municipalities to use the same under infrastructure assets, roads, surface, 20 to 30 years, 20 would be the asphalt, 30 would be the concrete, the road grade or base is 40 years, uh, traffic lights, signage and equipment, 10 years, water and sewer, underground networks, 40 to 60 years, depending on what material they use, like the copper, pipes don't last as long as the PVC. PVC would last the 60 years of copper or concrete or other materials would be less. Uh, hey, bottom of page 12, measurement uncertainty, just states that there's some estimates and assumptions big ones being amortization for tangible capital assets based on estimates of useful lives for groupings of similar assets. The accrual of the landfill closure liability is based on estimated future cash flows using an assumed rate of inflation to expect a date of closure discounted to the financial statement date using an assumed long-term average borrowing rate. So lots of estimates for that one. And then uh, pre-retirement bonus entitlement is based on estimated future cash flows 
using NSC rate of inflation to have expected dates of retirement discounted to the financial statement made using an assumed long-term average borrowing rate. And so the actual numbers may differ significantly from the estimates that management uses uh, their judgment and makes the best estimates and the auditor will, will comment on the use of estimates when he gives his report. There's some com a lot of coming changes for county standards for municipalities, but uh, they have not been applied in preparing these financial statements. I mean, the municipality is currently assessing the impact of the new standards. Uh, one in particular, asset retirement obligations defines and provides guidance for accounting and reporting retirement obligations associated with tangible capital assets. And so uh, the, the costs that have been recognized for the future closing of the landfill uh, will be different once these new standards come into effect. And then there's a, other assets that are going to have to be looked at as well, like Lagoon and any building that has asbestos in it, <clears throat> management is going to have to determine, assess those and determine the costs of remediation in the future and record a liability for that future obligation. So that, that's the big one that's coming. Uh, note three breaks down cash and temporary investments and also discloses that for of that six point four million dollars in cash at four point seven is in reserves for debt principal repayments and tangible capital asset acquisitions. And well, that number also includes uh, seven hundred and eighty six thousand held by controlled entities and government partnerships. And the town has an authorized $500,000 revolving demand facility by way of overdrafts, but that is not used at any time during the year. And the rest of the notes just, a lot of them are just breakdowns of, that uh, I already mentioned. Some of the major changes in financial position line items they're broken down further in the notes. So going down to note 14 on page 18, I guess just skipping back to the long-term debt note 11, you can see the, all the various uh, outstanding debentures there and when they mature and you know, what the annual payment is and the interest rate. Note 14, accumulated surplus breaks down in that $32 million figure into its uh, components, 1.4 million in nominal surplus, 157,000 in utility, uh, tangible capital assets, 24.8 million in reserve funds, 4.3 million, and then 1.7 million of consolidated entities makes up that 32.4 million. Uh, note 15 commitments, uh, there's obviously the commitment for policing services with the government of Canada through the RCMP. And, uh, that cost just under 1.4 million in 2022. There's the Swan Valley Farming Training Project. There's two projects at the water treatment plant. And then the Centennial arena renovation, so the town entered into a project development agreement with a contractor for the arena renovation project at a cost of 285000 which got paid in 2023. The town also entered into a project contribution agreement with Miss Manitoba to provide a grant towards that project in the amount of 300000 from the Building Sustainable Communities Program 
initial payment of 180,000 has been recorded as unearned revenue. But then uh, in 2023, the town council passed the first reading of a bylaw to expand and borrow for that project. Yes, we just we just got the the, the note says the board of municipal board has not yet approved the bylaw. We actually just got it just within the last few days. But then uh, uh, the March twenty eighth meeting, the town council defeated a resolution to enter into a construction contract with the contractor for, to proceed with only the floor slab replacement and portion of the arena retrofit. And then at a meeting held April 28th, town council approved a memorandum of understanding with the Swan Valley Legacy Committee to pursue a joint venture to build a new arena, the cost of which has not yet been determined. Any questions on any of the notes? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? There is none. Uh, note 24 related party disclosures just shows the balances and transactions between the related parties, airport commission, library, and physician retention and recruitment fund. So um, schedule one is the consolidated schedule of tangible capital assets. It shows the opening balances, the addition, disposals, or cost and accumulated amortization. So the additions under land and land improvements are 9,000 for the landfill road and 9,000 for sidewalks. And the vehicles, equipment, and furniture includes the uh, two loaders and the cost the total of 425,000, 46,000 firefighting equipment, 18,000 fire extinguishers, 24,000 alarm systems, 20,000 pool hot water tank, and $54,000 tractor. And the disposals there of 198,000 included a loader and various other equipment. The additions under roads, streets, and bridges were the second street north and second street south asphalt paving and um, under infrastructure assets under construction the $325,000 additions were the water treatment plant capital projects that, that weren't finished in 2022 but costs to, to the end of December 2022 were $325,000. Uh, schedule two consolidated schedule of revenues just breaks down all the line items and uh, statement of operations into a little more detail and schedule three does the same for expenses schedule four consolidate statement of operations by program is very useful in my opinion because it shows the cost of each of the major types of groupings of services provided by the town so general government have shows a surplus of 4.7 million because all the taxation is in that column and, and the taxation funds all the other columns protective services so the difference between Total expenses and total revenues means a net cost of 1.3 million to the town. Transportation services a net cost of 1.2 million to the town. <coughs> Environmental health services almost broke even in 2022 because of the uh, contaminated soil revenues. You can see up there under the user fees that. Revenues were 1.3 million, where they were only 876,000 a year before. <clears throat> and uh, recreation and cultural services is the 1.6 million dollar to the co cost to the town. And 2021 showed a surplus because of the uh, funding for the wellness center construction being brought into revenue. 
I'm sure it's 2.6 million. So without that 2.6 million, they would have had a $1.4 million deficit in 2021. Uh, schedule five shows revenues and expenses, uh, just like schedule four did, but this time broken down by core government controlled entities and government partnerships. So you can see the effect that the controlled entities and their only partnerships have on the numbers. Under grants and contributions, there's minus numbers there because so we're required to eliminate uh, transactions between the town and these other entities in the consolidated statement. So that's the eliminating aspect there. So that it, in the end, it's only grants going outside of the municipal reporting entity, it's called. Uh, schedule six shows the change in reserve fund balances. So the equipment, the, the transfers from the uh, general or utility operating fund into the reserves and then transfers out. So the transfers out from the equipment, the 20,000 was for the loader backhoe adventure payment. And then the 320,000 was for the loader purchases. Under uh, recreation facilities, this 25,000 was for a tractor and council decided to transfer the surplus in 2022 to a tax stabilization reserve. So that was 475,000 there. And then four, the council also decided to transfer 437,000 into the landfill closure reserve. And that was the difference between the revenues and expenses from just the landfill uh, because of the sizable uh, surplus there from the contaminated soil. Uh, federal gas tax funding, 214,000, uh, 8,700 was for sidewalks, 64,000 for Second Street South Base Repair and Asphalt, 103,000 for Second Street North Mill and Fill, 29,000 for Rose Ave Avenue Excavate and Fill, and 9,000 landfill road building. And then Again, the town or council decided to transfer whatever surplus there was in the utility operating fund to the utility reserve. So that was 88,000. And also transferred 50,000 into the lagoon improvement reserve. Uh, schedules eight and nine show the financial position and operations for just the utility that's required by public utilities board. They want to see the figures just for the utility. Uh, schedule 10, page 37, reconciles the financial plan to the budget. So council budgets according to the municipal act which is quite different from the public sector accounting standards and so all these columns represent the changes that need to be made so like for general council budget is zero budget and for general and for utility is zero budget but then all these changes from converting from municipal act accounting standards to public sector accounting standards so under the Municipal Act, uh, amortization is not an ex expense, but it is under public sector accounting standards. So those get it all added in, budgeted amounts for amortization. And then transfers to capital, which are an expenditure under the Municipal Act are not expenses under public sector accounting standards. So those get taken out. And then in this column, uh, Again, under the Municipal Act, uh, the entire amount of debenture payments is an expenditure, but under public sector accounting standards, only the interest is. And then and the transfers column, again, under the Municipal Act, transfers from 
reserves and surpluses or revenue, but um, transfers to reserves are expenses, but not under public sector accounts, and so those get eliminated. Long term accruals and the consult budgets of the consolidated entities gets the total public sector accounting standards budget. Uh, schedule 11 analysis of taxes on the roll and schedule 12 analysis of tax levy is self explanatory. Schedule 13 shows just the general operating fund expenses. That, uh, expense schedules that we looked at before were consolidated. General operating, utility operating, and all the consolidated entities. This schedule is just the general operating fund, nothing else. And I think our councils probably requested this not required for public sector accounting standards, but it's a schedule that I believe was requested by municipalities that wanted to see just the general operating plan. And then uh, schedule 14 reconciles the net surplus under the municipal act to the net surplus or deficit on the consolidated statement of operations. So the same types of eliminations that we're on uh, Schedule 10, converting the municipal you know, budget to the public sector accounting standards budget. You'll see the same uh, types of adjustments here. So the surplus under the municipal you know, act was zero for both general and utility because the council passed resolutions to transfer whatever surpluses there were to reserves with uh, all the adjustments required to convert to public sector accounting standards and the general uh, shows a surplus of 550,000, the utility a deficit of 130,000 for a total of 413,000, which corresponds to the surplus that was shown on previous schedules. So that's, the, that's all that I had to present unless there's any Final questions before I turn it over to Mr. Hardy. <clears throat> Any final questions? Okay. Welcome, Mr. Hardy. All right. Thanks uh, very much, Terry, for your uh, very excellent presentation of the financial statement. And um, before I go into the audit report, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge that um, these financial statements are not prepared by our firm. We audit the financial statements, and uh, uh, Terry prepares them, um, does an excellent job. They're very thorough, very complete, and um, he does a great summary and analysis of it all. So, And uh, when we're performing our audit, um, he provides information that we request as part of the audit process immediately. So uh, it's uh, great working with Terry on, uh, on the audits. Thank you. So uh, our job is to provide an opinion on the financial statements, and um, that's what the uh, first paragraph indicates, that we have audited the consolidated financial statements, the ones that Terry just uh, presented to you, of uh, the town of Swan River, uh, which comprise the consolidated statement of financial position uh, as of the year end, December 31st, 2022, and the consolidated statements of operations, the change in net financial assets and cash flows for the year then ended, and includes the, uh, our review uh, and audit of the notes to the consolidated financial statements uh, and the summary of significant accounting policies that Terry summarized uh, some of the most important ones for you. And in our opinion, and this is uh, the basis of an audit is to provide an opinion, in our opinion, the accompanying consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects, the financial position of the town as at December 31st, 2022, and the results of its operations and its cash flows for the year that ended in accordance with, and the basis that we do it is in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. 
the basis for our opinion, uh, we conducted our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. We have a set of uh, rules and procedures and standards that we follow uh, to perform the audit process. And our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities that's later on in this audit report um, for the audit of the consolidated financial statement section of the report. We are independent of the town in accordance with the ethical requirements that um, are relevant to, the, to our audit and of the consolidated financial uh, statements in Canada and we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with these requirements. And we believe that the audit evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide the basis for our opinion. And the next paragraphs uh, describe what are the responsibilities of management and those charged with governance for the, of the consolidated financial statements. So uh, the responsibilities of management, that would be uh, Terry and his finance department, and those charged with governance uh, is your council. And so everybody works together to um, operate the, the town uh, efficiently, but also under a set of rules and standards and internal controls, and that's what we're auditing. And then the next paragraph is uh, our responsibilities for the audit of the consolidated financial statements. And as I said, our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance as to whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement. And it does include that uh, whether they, that would be due to fraud or error and to issue an audit report that includes our opinion, which we have done. And um, there is, as part of the audit, in accordance with those auditing standards we have to follow, we have to exercise our professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. So we're always uh, asking questions and uh, looking for substantiation and, and proof and, and so on of uh, any questions that we ask, and that's where um, Terry is, uh, provides that information to us on a very timely basis. And we also communicate with those charged with governance, uh, which is what we're doing right now, and uh, discuss the plan scope and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, which we're doing here, the audit report, plus there's a letter that I, we're going to summarize it on. Um, and if we did uncover or did find any uh, deficiencies in internal control, we would identify that to you at this time. So it's a clear audit opinion. I also have um, brought along what we call our audit findings letter. And I don't know if Terry is able to pull that up on the screen or not, but um, this is um, the audit findings letter that uh, there's one copy here addressed to, um, to uh, the mayor and there's one copy that is... Um, addressed to uh, members of council. And we prepared this letter to assist with this review of the uh, consolidated financial statements of the town of Swan River for the year ended that we just uh, summarized and looked at. Um, so as far as the status of the audit, we've completed the audit of the financial statements with the exception of the following. We need a uh, signed representation letter from management, which after you uh, uh, have your uh, resolution tonight to approve the statements that'll be signed and that'll be provided to us uh, completing our discussions with council which we're doing right now and obtaining evidence of the council's approval of the financial statements so after you have your meeting uh, Terry provides us with a copy of the resolution to uh, show that you have approved the statements that have been presented once these have been completed then we will sign and date our audit report uh, we did, uh, throughout the course of our audit, we did not make any changes to our initial audit plan. We did not find any significant matters that we need to bring to your attention at this time. There was no significant di difficulties encountered during the audit. The audit process went very smoothly, as it always has. Um, there are, as Terry discussed, some uh, accounting policy choices that you have, and they're all summarized in that note to the financial statements. 
and uh, there were no changes in your accounting policies during the year. We didn't identify any alternative policies uh, that would have been more appropriate and we didn't identify any significant accounting policies in controversial or emerging areas. Uh, as Terry indicated, there are some changes upcoming in uh, this coming year to uh, some of the disclosure standards and, and um, those will be dealt with on your next year's uh, financial statements. And we'll go through the same process again. Uh, there are some estimates and judgments uh, in your financial statements and um, we're satisfied that the estimates made by management are reasonable and uh, that includes things like the allowance for doubtful accounts, inventory, crude liabilities, deferred revenues, the book value of capital assets, and landfill closure liabilities. Uh, we did not find any uh, misstatements that needed to be corrected, so we didn't have to correct any during the audit. Uh, that we did not find any deficiencies at all in your internal controls. They are very strong and they operate very effectively. Uh, so we didn't identify any other matters that we need to bring to your attention at this time and uh, would like to um, thank management and your staff for all the assistance that they always provide to us during the audit process. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we can also have any comments or questions to Mr. Hardy. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming out and, and performing the all right. and reviewing it with us. And uh, also thank you for your professional comments on uh, Mr. Gnita's uh, work uh, that he does for the town and assisting your office as well. We appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, carrying on then to six, six point one. The result of the email regarding the province of Manitoba's proposal for building codes from Laura Tyler be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Councilor uh, Medwood. I have a couple questions. Um, the email from Laura Tyler it was dated June 21st and the consul consultation period referenced in that letter ended on June 26th. Did we respond? No. Okay. Um, with the provincial news release, um, so it's a done deal, Manitoba's reverting back to Tier 1. Uh, yes, that is what it says. Mm -hmm. They will. And what impact does that have to the town for new builds? Positive, negative? I guess that's... You... Uh, I guess you have to do the research to see the... what you would feel would be positive or negative based on the decision that Minister Rias has made. Well, my understanding from reading the communications is there's building that codes that are currently being used and building is happening at the tier two, tier three levels. And by reverting back to tier one, it means we have no grounds to enforce a building code above tier one. So we can no longer enforce building codes at the tier two or tier three level. We, if a builder chooses to build at tier one, it sounds to me like we have no recourse to continue on with that tier two, tier three standard. Mr. Harvey's office will be probably looking at all these what changes that would impact on the municipality. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving on to 6.2, result of the building and demolition permits 34, 23 through 40, 23, with a total estimated value of 2.140,800, oh, sorry, let me say this all again, $2,140,831 be received. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Reports. 
7.1 result of the Swan River Lagoon Project School Change Funding Agreement be signed with Water Services Board for $150,000 at the Town of Swan River, funding 50%, $75,000, and the Water Services Board funding 50%, also $75,000. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. I have a question. In reading the documentation provided by the Director of Public Works, has we, have we, the town, actually looked into acquiring land outside of the town boundaries for a new lagoon build? Uh, yes, a study was done in 2001. They gave that as an option. Uh, we couldn't use that anymore, but yes, a study has been done. They gave a proposal for a site, but we would, like I say, we couldn't use that. We would have to redo this study. Because it's my understanding, reading this documentation, that that is part of what's going to be considered is looking at a new location. So if we're going to do a new location, would it not make sense to maybe move it further away from the town? Well. The, the reason they're increasing their funds is a uh, permeability testing. So they did a general geotechnical investigation uh, as part of a, call it a typical EAP. But uh, the recommendations that came back in that was a, I can't remember the type of line they recommended and it's cost prohibitive. So in order to look at different options, they have to do further testing, which where these, this, this is the cost. We're looking at further options, further investigations to provide options on how to fix our current lagoon as opposed to building a new one. Councillor Bobbitt. I think my question was answered, but I'm just wanting to know how did we get to the increase? So. Uh, it's, it's it. That's the cost to to do firmer permeability testing on our lagoon in order to get, uh, I gotta remember, I gotta see the proposal here. <clears throat> so the, the, the cost is a relationship to the testing of our lagoon or the finding of a new site? So <clears throat> testing of the existing berms. Okay. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. 7.2. Result of the uh, result of the protective services report for June the 20th, June of 2023 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a few questions. Oh, fire chief is on. Good. Um, you mentioned the electromagnetic lock at the library, what was the result of your looking into that? Um, upon inspection, I did send a letter to the library board stating that the way the lock was set up at that time was against fire code. And from there, I have no idea what happened to it yet. I haven't heard back. Okay. Um, I'm sure that the library board will be dealing with that and communicating that with uh, the fire chief. You had another one? Uh, yeah, uh, animal control. We had four loose cats, and I think it's referenced two dogs at large are off leash. What are, how are we handling those calls? <coughs> the uh, dog off leash calls, if our uh, my officer can uh, Verify they actually are, are off the leash. He's contacted the owners, spoke with the owners, and in some cases issued fines. Okay, and for the cats? Uh, same process, investigation, and fines is required. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the discussion, Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, just reading the fire report, I, I'm, I'm reading, trying to read between the lines. So if you have a fire call that's one hour, and then you have eight man hours, I'm taking that's eight men. Yes. Correct? Okay, so so am I under the impression that a 
firemen will come for a call for one hour. It's a minimum. Pardon? That's their minimum call. So they only get paid for one hour. No. Because you're not like a call out that you get two hour. Okay. No, I, back in, um, I guess I just started back in 2006, 2007, the fire department made a joint decision to stick with a one hour minimum call out because that's certain calls like, um, for example, our false alarm to extra foods on Saturday was a 20 minute call out. And that would have cost the town the three hour call out rate that was suggested at that time about 24 hours, about man hour. So the department realizes that those rates, the town won't be able to afford the firefighters. So we agreed to a one hour call out. Thank you very much for that. I just, is there, when the bells go off, so it's everybody that's available, I think. It is, yeah. It's a one mass page, if you want to call it that. Yeah. There's no way to, to leave it to specific firefighters, so the whole department gets paged out and who's available comes. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Councilor White, your rattling is uh, probably bothers the, the viewers. Pardon? Your, your crumpling of your candy wrappers. <clears throat> 7.3, result of the June 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Council and sales report. I'll start with Councillor Bobbitt tonight. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just uh, apologize. I should have. Uh, are we going into camera? This we are. We are. You know, can I add something to that at, at, at that time? Uh, I should have done that at the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, that's why I'm apologizing right now. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think we can do that. Okay. Well, it's something. You can do. Uh, not too much to report, uh, busy other things. Uh, I had some conversations with some of the people at Public Works and we will be looking for a new sweeper in the near future. So with that conversation, there's different types of sweepers. Uh, the PAW supposedly has three, two for sure. What is there a brand that probably would be something that the Thomas Warren will be looking for. I guess my suggestion would be, is if the thoughts of council that I would believe that we should send either our foreman or our mechanic up there to talk to their mechanic and their foreman and get their opinions on these machines instead of getting the opinion of the salesman that comes to sell us this stuff. So if that's something that we would talk to you. I would say that that would happen. Through Mr. Harvey? Okay, perfect. Uh, another issue come up is there is people willing at Public Works to take the Class 3 driver's license, which is something that we should be looking at. The cost of this is $6,000 per person. Uh, I personally don't have a problem with it, but at the same time, when we put that expenditure out for somebody, I would believe we would, should recoup something by at least uh, you just need to stay working for us for three years or something. So I don't know if that's something that yeah. Say, oh, cool, I could talk about and bring it to council a little later. You can bring that up at a call meeting. Okay. Uh, personnel committee, yeah. Or okay. Personnel. I just, and this is my personal pet peeve, recycling. I see the truck pick it up, out he goes, and I see the bills that come in every month. Uh, can I somehow, or can we get an explanation where does this recycling go and what does it make? I really don't know if it's going and being put in a pile, or I really don't know where it's going or what we're achieving by doing all this at a cost, a large cost to them. So, yeah, we can get Director Herbie okay, to, perfect. to get a report to Council. And I probably Your time be talking. Has expired, but I'll let you continue for one more. <laughs> I just, I'll be talking to Mr. Harvey about the sidewalk on First Street North and Town. That's it. Okay, thank you. Councilor Medwood. Uh, I had a couple meetings in July, the Community Safety and Wellbeing meeting. Uh, biggest takeaway from that is once we have these 
project plans in place for each community who's put in the bill to implement them. It was the biggest takeaway for me. And then there was the cow meeting on July 25th. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Council White. Uh, July the 12th, we had a uh, RCMP meeting looking at uh, protective services, and uh, that's something our, our council, as we all know, takes very seriously and I remain optimistic. A cow meeting on the 25th of July, and I just want to comment on the 26th, uh, I attended the 50th anniversary reunion, and I think it's important to, to uh, compliment the organization committee, uh, Frank Booms and, and company, but also Councilor Bobak, who somehow got uh, 70 or 80 of them on one low bed. And, and there was 150 people registered, so probably 250 came to town. And that's a lot of money. Point of order. Right. I believe this belongs in the member privilege. It, it does. Both to comment? Your committee reports, please. Not your member privilege. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, then I'll just, uh, August 1, I had the municipal developers with the rest of the team. August 1, uh, I had a very brief meeting with Minister uh, Wasco and MLA Wojcik, and what a compliment to the things, uh, things that they're spending 14 million, 15 million in one spot in our town, 3 million towards the uh, arena. So I was pretty excited about uh, hearing those numbers. So I'm not sure the rest has come, but we'll find a place. Okay. We'll get used to this. Well, I'll get uh, into it. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. <coughs> Um, not a whole lot this period. Uh, on July 5th, we had our beneficiaries meeting uh, with uh, an estate we're uh, associated with. And then on the 19th, the Community Safety and Wellbeing uh, Project presentation. Um, and some of the literature and the projects that are being handed down with that. Uh, last week, the 25th, our community the whole. And I, along with uh, Councilor White and His Worship, um, attended the uh, parade. Uh, so, Councilor Bobbitt had his own float, and mm -hmm. Councilor Medwood was steering us all at the front. And then, just uh, hopefully, either later this week, uh, uh, the General Government Committee will be meeting with Swan Valley West uh, to finalize. Uh, hopefully the fire board agreement and get that off and rolling. So, that's all. Okay, very good. Councillor Powell, you can hear us good there. You look pretty relaxed, so uh, you can go. You're, you're muted, so you want to... Um... Okay, there we go. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. Um, so yeah, so now we had a couple meetings. Um, we've had a library board meeting, a few of them, and um, two meetings with that, or discussion with the library. Um, we've uh, hired a summer student for, for the next couple months, and she's working out really well for us. She's providing, providing quite a few um, programs for kids and plans to work more in the community, so that's coming new. Um, we uh, have done some interviews for with her rec director um, with the CEO pool and deputy mayor Morrow. and um, we had some great meetings today with um, oh was it um, uh, Rick Holmes and um, and it, yeah lots of great things happening today it was amazing there was lots of things that were announced today and um, lots of things happening and, and just a great big thank you to. Um, Emily Wolchuk and lots, lots happening, so that's great. Okay, thank you. Um, for myself, I won't repeat what all everybody had mentioned already, but definitely today was a big day. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've actually spent a lot of time meeting with uh, Chief uh, Janai several different times over the last week, and and Chief Zastri on a few things, and we were trying to uh, line up something for us to go in and visit them and also make our presentation to Sapatoya Creation. So we're probably in the fall time. They're, everybody's kind of busy doing different things right now. Today, um, Swan Valley School Division in the province of Manitoba with Sapatoya Cree Nation and Wasquisipic First Nation announced the performing arts uh, space at the Swan Valley Regional School and a, a commitment from the provincial government of $15 million. So that's a huge, uh, uh, you know, feather our cap in our community. Uh, CT announcement, yes, you know, we've been kind of working on this for a long, long time, but 
we have more of a date now and we're looking at some time uh, early next year. Uh, the arena, um, again, with the help of the Legacy Committee, great to have them there to the announcement today with MLA Wolchuk and uh, uh, Minister Owasco, um, but uh, the 3.1 million uh, from the provincial government as we uh, applied for a little bit more, but the 3.1 is what we got. Uh, I'm sure that the uh, Legacy Committee will be working on uh, more in fundraising as we hear more as time goes on. Thunder Hill Ski Club, congratulations to them. They got $132,000, and that is for the Magic Carpet, I believe is what they call it. So that's kind of neat, and a few other uh, things as well from uh, on the health side, uh, the, the stations that they used at the personal care homes, and I believe the museum also got two of them as well. Uh, Egg Society, they received $25,000, and that was for a wheelchair wrap at the... Uh, at the uh, grandstand and Swan Valley Cheetahs Gymnastic Club uh, for their roof project they got $35,000 so Rick has been working or I should say MLA Wolchuk's been working hard and advocating on behalf of uh, many groups <coughs> in the Swan River Valley so we have to be quite lucky to have them so and with that I think that's good for me uh, anything from our CAO uh, as he does have his uh, report I do have a written report on the agenda, so I can take any questions to that. Just to let council know, we did get second place. Oh for yes, thank you. Great quote. Uh, yeah, just just to mention a few, we are having a rec director interview, so hopefully we'll have a, a decision by the end of the week. And spending a lot of time with the community safety well-being uh, meetings. There's a lot of things that come in or a lot of meetings, but I'll take any questions on the written report. If, there okay. are. if anybody has anything, you see the report there. Looks like you're good, good report. All right, so shall we move on to new business 8.1. Result of the Swan Lake Watershed District audited financial statements for the year ended March 31st, 2023 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Any comments, uh, Councillor uh, Councilor Bob? Just, or, just or, a general or, comment. I want to compliment uh, the Conservation District for the exemplary they work they do up there. The water that's looked after up there comes through our town here and moves on down there. And they've got, uh, I think, an exemplary team locally in that building who uh, reach out to the community at all levels and uh, I appreciate the work that uh, Sport Fish for example does with them. Okay. Further discussion? Go ahead. Well just to speak on that a bit, uh, Conservation District is always looking for always looking for projects so if you have any farmer friends and it doesn't need to be necessary farmer and landowners of any kind please feel to drop in away. We've got a very capable staff there we probably handle somewhere now close to a million dollars not quite that brings through the economy here in the valley. So we're very proud of our staff and we're very proud of the capabilities that are done there. So we'll keep moving ahead. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 8.2. Resolve the amended Town of Swan River travel policy be approved. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Resolve that the CAO sign the amending agreements for the third party service set out in the attached amending employment training uh, project agreement, Schedule A, and the amending work crew agreement, Schedule B. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. Um, I read through these, but is it my understanding that these are essentially replacing the agreements that expired June 2023? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.4, resolve that the Chief Administrative Officer be authorized to sign the agreement with the Government of Canada on financing arrangements for retroactive payroll costs 
for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police members. Moved by Councillor uh, Medwood, seconded by Councillor Balbic. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a couple questions. Um, where is that lawsuit at that we had resolved to support? Yeah, it's my concern too, but go ahead. Yeah, it, it's not a lawsuit. It is a, just a legal inquiry uh, that, that the town owner is a part of. So we've inquired with the MMA on that. They, they, the firm that's been hired has simply, like, I guess where they're at right now is they've just gotten all correspondence from all the municipal members to the uh, federal government. So we haven't heard anything in terms of updates on where that's at. What this agreement is, is it allows the town to, to not pay for a period of two years. So this is what the AMM lobbied for quite heavily with the MMA. Uh, if we don't sign this, we may be subject to interest payments for not paying because we would have to start paying right away. So this is basically the federal government throwing us a carrot saying, well, we don't have to pay for two years. Uh, Just the bias in time. Correct. And so this is due prior to our next regular meeting, so I needed this resolution if it absolutely needs to be put in, but if I won't send it in until I get an update. If I do get an update from our legal team, I can send that to council okay. prior to sending it. So. You answered my second question too. Okay. What happens if we don't agree to this? <laughs> okay. Still don't agree to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I mean, the lesser of the two evils, yeah. I guess. Go ahead. Okay. Well, it pains me to even consider paying the, uh, the federal government with this and hopefully uh, with a new um, federal minister that there would be a change of heart in this file on that. Um, but with that said, 50% um, is due on March 31st, 2024 and the remaining 50% March 31st, 2025 and it's interest free. Um, so by all looks of it, we're still going to be on the hook of it unless something miraculous happens. Um, but instead of paying it all at once, where we were considering it paying off the bill at once, we might as well pay it in an installment plan and gain the interest. Uh, on our accounts instead of the federal government collecting it for us. So, uh, but hopefully there's a change of heart with the new federal minister and AMM and the MMA's loss or legal consideration. To get well, this AMM will continue working on this file. So, okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, 10. 10.1. Result it counts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30482 to number 308, sorry, 30584, totaling 356,708 and 61 cents listed on schedule A. Payroll counts checks number 5334 to number 5336, totaling 17,896.88 cents that is listed on schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number five triple three to number five three three seven to number five three four one totaling one hundred seventeen thousand nine hundred fifty eight thirty nine cents is listed on schedule C. Payroll accounts checks number five three four two to number five three four five totaling one hundred thirteen thousand three hundred fifty four and fifty cents is listed on schedule D. Direct deposit payments totaling $745 as listed on Schedule E and direct deposit payments totaling $256,009.79 as listed on Schedule F. Moved by uh, Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I have a couple questions. Um Line 30485, there's a few credit card charges for Amazon Marketplace. It looks like it's supplies and for Kids Camp and Veterans Hall. Can we maybe mention something to the rec department again about looking at shopping local? Um, maybe we can use that Chamber Bucks uh, prize there to offset some of those Amazon Marketplace charges. 
You can, yeah. And um, 30498 Valley Greenhouse, 6270 for Cemetery Greenery. I thought we, uh, Communities and Blooms, did the flowers and whatnot at the... I didn't have a chance to go through all of the uh, individual I, input statements. The only thing that comes to mind, I would have to refer this to Director Harvey, but if, if there was an issue with one of the maintenance, with, with an, a maintenance event that happened out there and, and something needed to be immediately replaced, we would do that. Okay. I know that's happened in the past. I'm not saying that that's what happened here. I'd have to get back to you. Director Harvey. It may very well. I didn't have a chance to go through all those individual invoices CFO Ganita provided for us. It was just one that I had flagged to look into, but I ran short on time before the meeting. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Just maybe have uh, Director Harvey maybe have a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 10.2. Resolve the Town of Swanover's draft consolidated financial statements for the year end of December 31st, 2022 be approved and the independent auditor's report thrown be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Ganita for his work. The only word to describe it is well done. Mm -hmm. He gets a compliment every year. I would hopefully that they accounted for him, they realize who they're working with. And again, hats off to Mr. McGinney. Here, here. Go ahead. Um, Yes, I just want to echo what Council Bobbitt just said. Uh, thank you to Mr. Ganita and the rest of the financial and administrative team for making it um, a painless um, annual financial audit again this year. Um, when I first started years ago, it was not so painless. Um, so Mr. Ganita and his team has uh, uh, definitely streamlined the finances of the town and I want to recognize him. and the rest of the people in administration for um, steering the ship in the right direction and keeping council and everybody in line and making it easy for our auditors to uh, uh, do our, our financial audit with no recommendations again. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Resolve the financial statements for the six months ending June 30th, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas sections 365 2 of the Municipal Act provides that Council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which property, uh, which the properties, the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. And whereas sections 372 of the Municipal Act provide that a municipality may set any terms or conditions for the sale of property to be sold for taxes and may be or may set a reserve bid in the amount of the tax arrears and costs in respect of the property. Be it resolved that the town of Swan River place a reserve bid on each property included in the 2023 tax sale in the amount of tax arrears and costs owing in respect of the property. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? Councilor Bobbick. Okay, just at the last statement there, so we're under the impression that everything owing on the property will be the reserve bid. Yeah. And there is no, there is some properties that we're going to acquire right away that you are never going to reach that money. Nobody's going to offer it. So how would you bring that down? What do you mean by that? Well, if we occur costs that are way above what the property is worth and we say we need to get our costs back, then we will not be able to sell them. No. We, well, we, go you, ahead. You can't, you can't assume 
what people will do in an auction. We're just setting the reserve bid. If we get it back, we can sell it wherever we want. To. But right here it's saying we're going to set the reserve for what's owing. Yeah. Okay. So there is going to be some properties here, in my belief, that you will never get anybody to bid over that. Well, you don't. You, that's your opinion, I guess, but I, I would let this process go through, and when it is in the town's name, then you can sell it for whatever. We've always said it at this. I, I, I guess my thought on that is, I, I do believe that we should have a reserve bid, but I don't really believe that we should have cost sewing. We can sell it whatever we want. And again, we could go the other way. If we're only owing $2 on a thing, and the thing's worth $10,000. It's the will of council. Yeah. So, any further discussion? Go ahead. Um, as the by or the resolution reads, that's the current practice where it's the um, the reserve bid is the what the amounts owing is added on there as a way to potentially recoup that. Mm -hmm. um, and that we're using one potentially one property as an extreme as compared to all the others. Um, so I don't think the system or method that we're using is flawed by throwing in one anomaly out there that we can deal with through an, an alternate process by setting a price to a potential uh, person who may not want to bid that in the auction, but can put a, uh, put a potential offer uh, separately to the town afterwards. So that can be done on a different separate offer? Yes. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, once I'm the town has, yeah, has clear yeah, title, then... But as would any other property, just because it's as we did earlier this evening, municipal developers. Um, but this allows us for the back taxes or lawn cutting or any other um, additional charges that is still owed that are allowed through the assessment or the taxation process to put it on taxes. So I'm under the impression this is only applies to it at, at an auction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks this is this is the only the one once a year for the the, la, the okay. no, property that it's in arrears of taxes. Okay. Thank you for that so. explanation. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Ten point five. Whereas section three twenty six of the municipal act provides that the municipality may impose supplementary <coughs> taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide the municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be resolved that the assessment alterations made by the Manitoba Assessment Services on July 11, 2023 be made to the 2023 property and business rule tax rules with the resulting increases, increases totaling $917.04 and the resulting reductions totaling $1,197.08. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. 11.1. Resolved that the bylaw uh, number 7, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, authorizing the payment of remuneration to members of council, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Morio, or Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, after reading it in consideration, it, uh, I would suggest uh, since it's only second reading, we have time before third reading is that we uh, administration look at the feasibility of adding a line in there for um, his worship or, or uh, designate um, uh, for some type of remuneration when they um, are required to go speak um, at special events as, as like we did today or at the it's um, um, some years it's not so much but in other years um, Sometimes it takes off significant time from your personal um, business or venture um, for that. That just because uh, the town is doing well and getting a maybe a, a number of uh, grants and whatnot and some positive announcements, uh, the town representative 
uh, that's invited to speak uh, should not be penalized by loss of personal business or whatever. It should be um, administration come up with some type of compensation thing that doesn't go towards those 25 annual days that uh, are allowed in the indemnity, but an hourly fee or a per diem or whatever for it. So I would yeah. leave that up to administration to bring forward to us before third reading to suggest. I can make a draft prior to third reading. Yep. Okay. So, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.2. Resolve that the bylaw number 9, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan to regulate the process of giving out grants be read a first time. Moved by. Councilor uh, Medwood, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And 13. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed uh, is demolition uh, RQ. Uh, test labs and requests for funding, uh, that's recre Recreation and Wellness Center, Legacy Committee Contribution Agreement Update. Moved by Councilor Balbeck, seconded by Councilor Medwood. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Do that before or after? Oh, yeah. Um, if you want to do it now, you can. So, Councilor, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Um, I'm making a motion to for council uh, to reconsider um, under communication 6.2 uh, the building permit applications resolution. Okay. Uh, I would like to approve have the resolution or amended resolution read um, that building permit. 37-23 for 346 6th Avenue South be uh, canceled or not approved in this resolution. Is a, a motion to reconsider. Yes. All members uh, who voted are here. So this is you can't amend right now. You have to reconsider, and then you would have to a new resolution. That's correct. You have to def reconsider means you revote in this meeting, and then you would have to defeat it. Right. And then we motion a new. Okay. So then. I need a resolution to. Oh no! I just reread it again. Is uh, that what I do? That's correct, and I'll put in the pre notes and. The okay, so six point two. Yeah. Uh, res res resolve that the building uh, and demolition permits thirty four twenty three through forty twenty three with a total estimated value of two million one hundred forty thousand eight hundred thirty one dollars be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, uh, it has to be right, that's, that's reconsidered the as is. Yes. I'm thinking of my head myself. Okay, so all in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. Now you can bring forward a new resolution and I am arising out of camera. Okay. I would bring back um, the resolution um, permits 3423 to 4023 excluding permit. What did you put? Disappeared on you. Yeah, I moved it on okay. intentionally. So yeah. are you going to add that to 15? There you go. 
Um, we're not in discussion, but does if, uh, CFO Gnita, is there something that you want to discuss on this or something else? I'm just going to point out that the building permit has already been signed by the approved authority of the town, the building inspector. According to our laws, they have to be approved by council. Council doesn't approve it, then it's, then it's not approved. Thirty-seven or thirty-seven slash twenty-three, three forty-six six Avenue South. resolution but I, I I'm I will have to reread our bylaws because we we receive these as communication they're not for council approval so if, if we do this we still can uh, I have to read our I have to review our bylaws see if it can be revoked so I we I leave this be it. Should be able it's to. It's defeated. But so nobody's passed. It's yeah, nothing's received. passed. Nothing. Yeah. So council receives them as information. Okay. So that it, it's in our minutes now that you reject to receive them. So. Uh, what we can do is, is state that our bylaw takes precedent over that. We just have to, I've got to read the bylaw to see So that. then really we should just leave this for now? Yeah, because the process... The process began on that bylaw prior to the application coming to the town. Even though it was approved, we would have to write a letter stating this bylaw process takes precedent in the Okay, go ahead now. Can we just approve the one for the one? That's, that's not what Mr. Poole is saying. Okay. The, the bylaw may say that if the building the, inspector approves the permits, we're just receiving this as uh, correspondence. That's correct. So as information, the authority having jurisdiction approves the permits. That doesn't oh. mean that doesn't mean that I don't have the power to remove it as is, right? So I think we should leave it as is. You find out that first. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing to uh, defer or anything like that. It's just that we have now. We just basically said that we did not. We are not receiving it. Yeah, that's correct. We're also not receiving the others. It's it's just that we're not receiving the communication period. Oh, that's Everything correct. still goes through. So then I guess we leave it and then find out and then we'll come and bring it back. Yeah. Okay, so then that takes us back to 15.1. Yes. Uh, this is of the said property. So anyway, I'll let you guys figure this one out on your own. 
um, resolved that the owners of the property noted on 346 6th Avenue South Road, number 122 300.000, having failed to abide by, abide by an order given by the town of Swan River under 5 2021, the Fire Prevention and Emergency Services Bylaw Section 67, Council does approve of the demolition of the fire damage structure and Adams Contracting Incorporated be awarded the contract for demolition of the property at 346 6th Avenue South, roll number 122300.000, and the cost shall not exceed the bid price of $12,000 on the condition that the town of Swan River perform an asbestos inventory prior to work commencement. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor, uh, Mayor Morio. Discussion. Go ahead. Um, I recommend or uh, suggest that council approve this uh, uh, resolution to proceed with the demolition of this structure. Um, the structure has uh, received uh, fire damage a significant time ago, um, and it's only in the 11th hour that the uh, property owner is uh, seeking to do minimal repairs um, specifically um, to the four joists and no other um, fire damage repairs is noted. Um, so it will still continue to be um, a hazard under our fire prevention and emergency services uh, bylaw and it will continue to be a problem property if uh, this structure continues to remain in its current state and not be demolished. I pass the chair to uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, if I can. Uh, and what? Um, <clears throat> I agree with you on that. I, I, I would like to, to see us follow through because of the violation. But the thing is, right now, we do have a building permit that's existing to allow this person to do work in this house. So I'm thinking that until we know all the ins and outs of, to deal with that permit, we should probably consider tabling this to another meeting after we have all the information. Motion to table needs a second. So you, you're making that motion? I am making the motion, yes. Okay. Any second to table? Uh, discussion. Or I don't need a second no discussion. Reverse. Okay. So, uh, so Council Bobbitt seconds the table. So we pass this. There is no start date end date on it. You can withhold the contractor as long as you want. Uh, only, only for as long as his quoted price is good for. Okay. Well, I don't know. But, yeah. Chief Chief Orchuk, do you remember off the uh, RFQ? How, how long the quote is good for? Uh, just give me one second. The RFQ is part of your package. Okay. Only discussion allowed in the table is the length of yes. how long the table is. Yeah. According to the submission, uh, given there is no end date for the quote on the RFQ. Okay. So, so we got a resolution to, or a motion to table, um, mostly made by His Worship and seconded by Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, all in favor of tabling uh, the original resolution. So, what was that again? Was four? four I am not uh, Council Powell voted. Council Powell, did you vote uh, on the tabling of the resolution? Yes, I did. Okay, and what was it for? Uh, against, I voted against it. Four to two. Okay. Four to two to uh, so the motion is carried. Table. Okay. Chairs 
back to you. Okay. If you require. Thank you. Uh, 15 2 resolved that the owners of the property noted at 325 Fifth Avenue South Road, number 90200.00, have failed to abide by an order given by the Town of Swan River 5 2021, the Fire Prevention and Emergency Services Bylaw Section 67. Council does approve of the demolition of the fire damage structure and boarding contracting incorporated be awarded the contract for the demolition of the property at 325. Fifth Avenue South, Rule Number Nine Zero Two Zero Zero Dot Triple Zero, and that cost shall not exceed the quoted price of seven thousand three hundred and fifty dollars, on the condition that the town of Swanee perform an asbestos inventory prior to work commencement. Moved by Councilor Midwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion. All in favor. It's carried. 15.3 resolved the CAO approve the request for additional funding from Test Labs International Limited in regard to material specification review for the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center metallurgic uh, study. Did I say that right? Metallurgic study moved by Councilor Powell, or I'm sorry, Councilor Midwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion. We got a number from them. Oh, well, sir, yes, yeah. five thousand. It's in the in camera. Five thousand. Yeah, it's five. Yeah, it should stay at the end in the amount of five thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars. Perfect. So you could just add that in at the end. Okay. All oh, discussion. All in favor. It's carried. 16 members privilege. Let's start with Council White. I'm not sure I'm allowed. I'm be quite loud. <laughs> uh, I, I think it was a very special for me to attend the uh, 50th reading of the 150 registered guests and probably double that. And uh, I want to publicly thank um, Frank Coombs and his team and uh, Councillor Bobbitt for, for his help locally and, and the words you brought on behalf of Council at the dinner, sir, which we really appreciated. And in the parade, I had the pleasure of throwing candies and my arm is slowly getting better. And what a wonderful parade. One of good at two of the people out there, holy smokes. And uh, I would ask uh, Gail Poole to talk to our team about how to prune trees because there's a concern about maybe they're being a little more aggressive. And I'm not sure what's happening with the people who got the wrong piping into them. They had a water problem, we used the wrong hoses, and then they had water, they couldn't even boil it anymore. They, so did we compensate them, those people anywhere, by saying we'll buy 50 bucks of the water to drink? We took water to those people. Took water to them? That happened last Saturday. Perfect, end of discussion, thank you. I think we're too much. And just so that, uh, um, Director Harvey's not here, but uh, in the past we were using garden hoses to uh, trans, you know, transfer uh, water to the residences and uh, the Office of the Drinking Water told us that we can't do that anymore because it has to be uh, uh, RV white hoses that is uh, safer. So anyway, uh, we complied to that, but we didn't have enough hoses, so then we had to go with the boiled water advisory, then they went with do not consume it all and then um, our guys were taking bottles of water to the residences there. Perfect. Um, so all the residents are impacted got somebody delivered a couple of cases of water to them. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Well it was my first time being part of organizing the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce parade for the Northwest Roundup. We had over <laughs> 130 entries in the parade this year. We had Chief Janai from Sapotoyak and uh, Vice President Francis Chartrand of MMF as our honorary parade marshals. We had President Chartrand of MMF uh, join the local Métis floats and we also had Chief Sastry lead Westway Sepik with an number they 
represented well in our parade this year. They, I think they had at least five floats or entries for the, five or six for themselves. So uh, I'm grateful that they all came, appreciate it, hope they're going to be coming back. And I believe this is the first time ever that um, they have all been in our parade and part of it. So hats off to the events committee for helping make that happen. And thank you and appreciation to our neighbors for coming out and joining forces on such a big event. Okay, thank you. Councilor Paul. Um, no, I just like to also like reiterate that um, Rodeo is an amazing, amazing event. Um, everything went very smoothly by the sounds of it. Um, I was told that, um, don't quote me, but I was told that there was 5,500 people that went through the gates on Saturday. It was busy. It was a, a amazing thing. Um, and yeah, yeah, the only other thing is, uh, you know, the announcement on the CT scanner is, is amazing. And I think we should um, just, it's something that we are, we as a town have to embrace and, and I think we've all been waiting for this and it's a, it's going to be great for Swan River and we have to prepare for that as well. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bobby. No. Okay, Mayor Morio. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, just just happened in June, but just lately there was a group of motorcycles riders that started Ride for Reason. We've uh, actually donated $4,000 to the Senior Center. They were very happy with that. And the motorcycle group was very proud and thankful that we could give that to them. I also brought greetings at the 1973 school reunion from Mayor and the Council. I brought greetings. I asked if they wanted the Mayor to come and they said no, so I took it off myself. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they Ah, I appreciate it. So, yeah, back. so there was 162 registered uh, in that group. There's probably at least 50 people that no longer are with us. There was lots of laughs and lots of tears. The tour went to the school. You know, I've been back there since 50 years ago, but it's pretty amazing when you get the tour of that school, the technology and what's there. It's uh, We've got something to be very proud of there. Uh, also, just a question. Is there some way if a person or a, is going away for a week or a weekend that they have a number to contact COPP just to keep eyes out on their properties? Or is that something that should be done? Or? Uh, no, we're volunteer-based, and we operate on a do-what-you-can-when-you-can. So, I mean, you can send an email to the Swan Valley COPP, but uh, yeah, something like that. We don't do specific okay. monitoring of anything. We just patrol through the community. Okay. I will be talking to Mr. Harvey this week, or there's uh, I don't know if they finished it. They cut out by the post office, mm -hmm. but if you look on the other side of the post post office, uh, the other side should have the same treatment. But I don't know where we are with budget and that can be loud and time frame. Mm -hmm. We'll be speaking on that. Also, hats off to the staff working, especially on the garbage truck today. In that heat, I talked to a couple of young gentlemen there, and it's really hot riding that thing. So, hats off to these people out there in the heat doing all the work. So, thank you. That's a good point. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Your Worship. And not to mention opening the lids on those garbage trucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a few things. Um, again, hats off to all the organizations for the uh, or just round up an exhibition this weekend. It was uh, dicey with the weather changing every 15 minutes on the forecast, but uh, it turned out to be a rocking uh, event this year with, to me, it looked like record crowds in attendance just by the parking lots and seeing numbers on the uh, Facebook, so that was good. Um, again, it was good to hear uh, a rehash of a previous announcement for the CT scatter, giving a little bit more timelines, so um, hopefully the uh, timelines listed are on the extreme that things can come in faster and be operational more sooner than uh, what's anticipated. Um, if I could get administration um, to get in touch with MTI and to see uh, where they're at with 
line painting on Main Street and in the area. I've received a number of concerns about that, that uh, people don't know where the lines are and it's a free for all in some places. Um, and secondly, with the, uh, uh, I guess it's with our crime issue and things like that, some other issues that are RCMP um, issues that should be looking after, but it's a rehash of the loud muffler and the speeding. Uh, it's very particularly over the last couple of weeks, I've received a number of uh, issues. I think there's probably two or three culprits out mm -hmm. there that uh, like to speed and do residential stuff at four in the morning with uh, very loud straight pipes or cracker mufflers that are getting our senior citizens uh, very upset. So, so if you can pass it on to the RCP to keep an eye out for it and uh, have a chat with those individuals. Yeah. And then hopefully the fire chief and administration along with uh, uh, Mr. Lewicki, uh, we can figure out uh, between the building bylaw and the uh, fire preventions uh, bylaw which one takes precedence to get that issue sorted out and report to council. Yeah. Uh, so we can proceed with that. And then finally, congratulations to all the groups um, today that uh, and the Swan Valley School Division that we previously mentioned that got all the funding today. Um, it takes a lot of work to do, um, put yourself out there to put those grants in writing and actually do things for those organizations. So uh, congratulations to everyone who received those grants um, to put to use in our valley as a whole to make things better for us. If it wasn't for those volunteers, and those organizations to do that, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. So thank you for that. Okay. Uh, I don't really have much more to add to what you all have said. You know, uh, Ag Society, you know, I met with them actually today for a little bit and, and uh, some of the representatives said, you know, they're pretty happy with what they accomplished over the weekend and, and see the numbers. 5,600, I think, was what the number was on Saturday. So they definitely, and I think they, they said num the number is close to 14,000. I think last year was around 11,500. So for the whole uh, weekend. So um, they're still doing their numbers and all that, but they definitely had uh, a very successful event. And, uh, you know, my favorite, you know, is, is the wagons and, and all that and the chariots in the evening. And boy, I tell you, the people that were in there, it was, it was amazing. And uh, it, you could just feel the, the energy inside that. Uh, in that arena area, so it was it was good, and they should be proud of themselves. I know they they run themselves thin like every organization, and they, they're looking for volunteers and people to help out. So hopefully this is a uh, good uh, weekend. It gives them a good shot in the arm and get ready for next year. So I have a response for what I you have a response. Yeah. The, oh yeah. I you know I was gonna say it, but go ahead. You can. So, yeah. The MTI. We yeah. can contact the engineer. That was for that. Nice for the line painting <laughs> and uh, they did get back to us and basically said that the, the ones that have been done are done by highways but they're they're only doing select uh, PTH highways themselves everything else is through contract and there is no requirements or schedule on their uh, contract documents other than that they must be finished by we'll get the date right I think it's like October yeah, October 29th, it's yeah. the end of October. Yeah. So, so can we flag that for a discussion with the MTI Minister at AMM? Absolutely. Yeah, we kind of already talked about that a little bit, and, and I have actually spoke with the MLA Wochuk on it too, because like I thought, you know, like, if you're putting the paint down, say, just before freeze-up, how long is that paint going to last versus if you had it in, say, July, would it have a chance to bake onto your pavement? So, yeah, this is a big, yeah, big deal. Go ahead. Uh, just if you could add to that, I'd like to speak to them on the street sweeping like we do all our highways and the brush cutting too that we do all that time too could be added to the date yep. at the same time. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.40 p.m. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Powell at the beautiful lake there. There's some clear up there. It looks like daytime. <clears throat> Because it is state time. <laughs> Darker here. All in favor. All right. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Rest of your evening. Have a good night.